Give me a big hug. Who's ready for tonight? Give y'all a few minutes to jump on. Sorry I couldn't come on last night. My husband had me go with him to get something notarized. And the only time the lady could meet was 7.30 p.m. I'm like, seriously? So I had to move it. But Make sure you tell me where you're from. If you've done a barn quilt with me before. What are you grateful for today? So I hope y'all are coming on. Oh, I see y'all coming on. Awesome. All right, I'll give us a couple minutes. Y'all chat with me. Tell me where you're listening from. Come on now. Oh, can you tell? Oh, my goodness sakes. While we're getting ready, look what I got. I got myself my own little coffee thingy for my fire when we when I teach down at the fire so I don't know if I'll be sleeping tonight because I've had like way too much coffee but we're gonna have some fun gonna have some fun all right let me move this over to the side and move the camera down yay look at that y'all Oh my goodness, this one is so, so pretty. We can just print this baby out and not do a thing to it. I haven't done it on coaster size yet because I, I, I'm curious, but I love her. She's so pretty. Okay, so we're jumping on. All right, I've got a little special there in the bottom for those of y'all who are attending a way to give back to you on your time. So I went on um, GoFindYourHappy.com and this I put in pricing for only 24 hours like I did with the Hummingbird because I'm a little insane between having that low, low pricing and free shipping. And anyways, that's the scoop. All right. So oh, listen to this song. It's about being under the sun. Butterflies under the sun. All right, let me turn down that music and let's get down to some fun painting. All right, so I'm a little I'm a little crazy tonight, y'all. If you only saw, look at all this, all right? I'm just a little nuts because I had no idea how I want to paint this baby. So I'm hoping y'all can be my coach tonight and give me some ideas. I am already seeing butterflies out in the yard and I am so I am just loving it. We have the best butterfly bushes. And if you want to know what the butterfly bushes are, I can't think of them off the top of my head. But if you want to put in the comment, I will research and tell you what they are. Because in the summertime, I have like this hummingbird moth that comes to visit. That's a part of the butterfly family. And literally, I'll count like 10 butterflies on those bushes. Okay. All right. So what we'll do is I'm going to change the camera. I'm just loving this music. Maybe it's my, maybe it's my coffee. All right, let me change camera so we can get down to the details. Here we go. And I'm gonna switch this around so we can paint together. All right, y'all, here we go. I don't know why that's acting a little, oh, sorry about that. Some of you already jumped off. I think you might have not have been able to take my caffeine. Ha ha. That's all good. The replay comes on and y'all have life. I know. Busy lives. All right, so here we go. Um, this has a bunch of different patterns in it. So what I thought we would do is we'll bounce between the two cameras and we can just focus a little bit on the butterfly. Now, you might say, wow, that's a lot of detailing. I will tell you that if you wanted, if we wanted to, we could make this whole thing just paint right over it and make it just a silhouette. But as your coach, I want to not make it just a silhouette. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. 
before I do the interior of the butterfly itself, I'm going to think about some colors. So I'm going to switch back over. Seriously, y'all, I need some help. What colors do you think would go really nice with this? Because you see all the patterns. So like this is one pattern right here. And what's speaking to me is, you know what? We're going to do the squares first to see what kind of starts popping out at us. How about we do that? So we're going to do these four squares. And then we're going to do these four squares. That's what we're going to do. So I am going to turn that back around so you can watch me. You're like, Trisha, are you doing handstands with the butterfly quilt? Yes, I surely am. All right. So let me get my little paper plate here. Let's see. I love monarch butterflies and swallowtails that are purples and yellows and oranges. So I'm going to maybe... I wonder what we want to do. I really love this hunter green. So why don't we do a feeling of hunter green in these four boxes? Just so that way it's kind of subliminally like, I don't know. What am I trying to say? Abstract feeling of being in a flower itself. Of course, we could have it where she's flying and doing a bunch of different things or flittering around. But we'll go ahead and just do that. So those of y'all who've painted with me a lot or watched me you, or you've gotten kits from me, you know I send you a flat brush. The reason being is just it's so easy without any kind of taping to go in. Go right up to the line like you're coloring. So let's go ahead and just start that. This is my philosophy. If we don't like the colors, we can always paint over it. So I think the fun thing about us painting together is you're literally just watching me come up with the color palette right now for the very first time because I have not done this at all in any capacity. It's come right off the wood laser right to my studio right into your home where you're watching. This is Hunter Green from Anita's Paint. I really love this color. Um, I tell you what, it's getting a little dark, so I'm going to turn on a little bit of bigger colors. Uh, not color. Uh, one of my big studio lights. So that way you can see the color more effectively. There we go. I'm going to just drop it down a little bit. There we go. How's that? Does that look better for you? Oh, yeah, much better. Much better. Okay. So here we go. So this is, again, I just want to show you. So that way, if, do you have a Hobby Lobby? I would love to know. How many of y'all have a Hobby Lobby near you? So this is Anita's all-purpose acrylic. They also have Anita's outdoor paint. But I will say I've been doing bar quilts a long time and the all purpose works great for outside. I've yet done rock painting with them and everything. And the parent company is Rust-Oleum. So they ju it's just a really good paint. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and do these four squares here. And you know what I love about doing these barn quilts is Sometimes we don't even see the 3D effect um, come to life until we start painting and we go, oh my gosh, I didn't even see, I didn't even see that, you know, and it just starts coming to life. And I'll also find myself doing, um, like I might do another butterfly and you'll go, what? That looks totally different than what you did before, Trisha. Is that even the same etching? And it very well could be because just the way you lay the uh, paint 
in the areas. Linda, I have a Hobby Lobby. <laughs> yeah, you do, girlfriend. Man, I cannot wait for you to get better so we can go shopping. I have missed you so much. I can't stand it. I can't stand it. I hope you get better soon. Here, you make chicken noodle soup for everybody that's sick, and I bet you don't have anybody making you chicken noodle soup. And I've only made chicken noodle soup like maybe twice, so I'm not like your expert there. I could paint you a bowl of chicken noodle soup. But I know you got Russ taken care of you too, so. And I bet Little Bit is just loving all over you. This is one of my favorite greens, Hunter Green from Anita's Paint. Just absolutely love it. It is the color in my must-have toolkit. Just like the true red of Anita's Paint. There we go. Now to y'all, it might look like it's black, but it's not. And when we'll take a picture, here you go. You can see the deep green there. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this corner here. People ask me a lot. They'll say, do you go from the inside out? And I'll be like, I should maybe, but do I? No because sometimes I'll just tackle a big area just to get me, I guess I'll just say immediate gratification. And also if I do a big area, it kind of just sets the theme for like the rest of how maybe it's coming together. So I love doing a large area first. And it just kind of goes from personal, um, I don't know, personal gut gauge, I guess, if you will. Linda, if you want, I can get these. Uh, I could actually print a version of these in a, like, get a couple of them printed um, ornament size, if you want me to. And we can see how the butterfly kind of looks in that if you want. I might want to draw a different version of the butterfly where there's not as many of the squares, but it could be really, really cool. I think for the Barn Quilt Club, those of y'all who are members of the Barn Quilt Club, and by the way, I was trying to get to barnquiltclub.com and reset the timer, and I need my techie guy to help me. So if you want to be a part of Barn Quilt Club, if you register in, I have some extra inventory that I can send you some extra freebies. As a little happy gift. So if you register, let me know that you said, Trisha, you said you'd give me an extra happy gift. So that way I follow through because I have limited things in my stock, but I do happen to have a couple of extra things that I was trying out that you would be able to get a blessing for. Hey, ooh, I just, oh, I love it. This, this green is so pretty. Oh my goodness sakes. All right, so I'm gonna just flip this baby around. I'm working on the 24 by 24. Just so you know, I print up to 36 by 36, but if you live far away from me, you don't want an order. I don't even have 36 by 36, uh, should I say order, ordering ability. <laughs> because of the shipping cost. But if some of y'all live near me, I am near Lake Norman, North Carolina, Hickory, North Carolina, Winston-Salem, North Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, then definitely reach out to me if there is a barn quilt that you like on gofindyourhappy.com 
that you would love to have as a 36 by 36. So I am pretty excited that my shoulder is feeling better because I want to actually take one of these 24 by 24 and make an end table, a side table out of it. It's been on my bucket list. But then my friend Linda said that her granddaughter is doing one. She ordered a design and she is going to be doing a side table. And I love that idea. Talk about a conversation piece in your home to have a barn quilt design on top of a table. And I tell you, if you love to go to like yard sales or whatever, and you see a table bottom and you could place this wood over the top of it. Oh, wow. I, that would actually go for top, 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 top dollar. I mean, those of y'all that I teach barn quilt stuff, and you know that barn quilts are very expensive. Some of them sell for 200 and upwards of $200 to 25. I think I don't want to you know, jinx myself, but I'm the only one out there across the board in the United States, I believe right now, that does geometric um, animal designs inside of the barn quilts. They are just not uh, because they've been hand done. So, And this is where I love like hearing from you guys as far as like, oh, I would love to have this animal more of. I'm working on a fox right now because um, somebody likes a fox. And I believe I even have like an elephant and so forth. But I'm trying to just be very intentional of what I'm going to be releasing different during different times of the year. So right now I'm focused on. The summer garden series really is what I'm focusing on. The hummingbird, the butterfly. Um, I did do the horse. The horse is just so pretty. I haven't finished him. His name is Prophet. I haven't finished him just yet. So, but tomorrow afternoon, I will have an alarm timer set up to to manually change the pricing, okay? Because I, I can't keep that up for an extended period of time. I want to stay in business. So actually I had to do that conversation in the group because I was paying for shipping and I wanted to extend that. But I kind of joked around saying, I am not Amazon. And it's so true. I'm not. I, you know. Um but if you look for like things like this, they just don't exist. So I love this. Made in North Carolina, made in the USA, made with lots of love. Tender, loving, care, love. So once we do this circle, or this circle, listen to me, this square in this hunter green, we're going to flip to another color. Probably as your teacher, I should have some ideas of color swatches. But I just decided to let my spirit take hold. On that note, I did. I had a piece of art that I uh, painted. I painted the the words, and I had this metal butterfly on it. It sold on reclaimed wood, and it said, "Let your spirit soar." So sometimes I like coming and teaching without necessarily an agenda of the exact colors, because I just kind of want to see where my you know heart goes. There we go. Okay. I'm just going to stand up and take a look at that. The butterfly bush. So 
So Linda, while you're watching, what do you think? Do you think I should do like that light cool blue in it? So that way if we do like the purples and the blacks and stuff, it really stands out. That's what I'm thinking. Why don't we go ahead and just do, this is called morning blue. It's one of my favorite blues. I love morning blue. Do a nice little shake. Man, for those of y'all who live near me, it was cold today in North Carolina. Oh my goodness. I came down to the cottage. I was freezing. And now I'm hot. Imagine that. Okay. Get a little brush here. And let's just go ahead and go around this butterfly here. This is such a pretty color. I'm sure I'm going to integrate this blue somewhere in the whole design somewhere. So how many of y'all that are watching do quilting? of any kind. My mom sews and stuff, but I don't. Um, but I love doing these patterns. It's just really, really fun. And I love the meaning of, of, of quilting. I think quilting brings families together. I know it does. You know, speaking of that, uh, I'm on a scrapbooking club that's private. Yeah, I mean, you can get into it or whatever. And one lady said, um, she said, you know, I think I asked my um, kids if they were interested in my scrapbook that I put together. And she said, and one of them said, well, maybe one day I'll want maybe one or two. And she was like, I was so sad. I'm like, maybe I should just quit it all together. And some other, you know, women chimed in and so forth. And I told her, I said, you know, I said, when I was younger, I did not appreciate, um, you know, the things that my grandmother or even my mom had created at that time, right? I guess I took it for granted or my mind was on other things. But just recently I was staying at my mom's house and I found myself going to the guest bedroom and pulling out, um, out of the, my mom's bookcase Bibles. And I got to pull out my grandma Harmon's Bible and also my dad's Bible, because I wanted to look at the notes. I wanted to see maybe what were they thinking about at that time and, and stuff like that. And, um, and I think the same applies like with our painting and things like that. We think, oh, you know, nobody really cares about it and so forth. And I, and I will tell you that, um, it's just them thinking in that moment because I only have a few things from my grandma Harmon. And I don't know if I have really much anything from my grandma think because she quilted me this bow tie quilt and it was in the attic and a little rodent got in it and it destroyed my little quilt. But one of y'all gave me an idea and said, well, go ahead and pull out the pieces that were not destroyed and see if you can piece it into another, um, like another quilt pattern or transform it into a pillow or something. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. 
I love the story of that too, because something that we think that has no worth or could be thrown away is can be repurposed into something really valuable and precious. So I think that's pretty cool. And I've, you know, I'm just like thinking about this, talking with y'all and stuff, you know, and there's so many like assisted living and nursing homes and so forth where they have art, but it's so generic, you know, it's like some buyer just went and bought these pictures of mountains and all of this and just kind of put them on the wall. And I want to encourage you that if you're doing any kind of art or something creative, you don't have to give your original way if you don't want to, but you could actually like you could upload, let's say like this painting to let's say like Shutterfly and you could make um, a pillow out of this, which would be beautiful. Um, you can do cards, you can do painting, like prints of your paintings. And um, your things can go a long way. I mean, I don't know if any of y'all have ever had a desire to like take some of your passion or anything to, um, to like making a side income or not. I share that because last night when we had to meet the notary lady, um, I said, you know, do you like doing this and does it give a good income? And she goes, well, actually, no, I, I can only charge $5 per signature. I was like, really? And stuff. And she says, but you know, she goes, it does give me a little bit of income and I'm disabled. So it kind of gives me play money to be able to feel good about going and buying something for myself or taking my kids out to a meal or something like that. So she says, you know, so I enjoy doing it. Sometimes I wonder how many of y'all maybe do some creative things, but I've never thought about how you could monetize it if you needed to. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Top marketing for years, but right now, um, I mean, and I am coaching somebody where I help her with things, but really what's calling me in my heart is how to unlock your joy and your passion of just living, wanting to live life and experience all that God's put in front of you and using art to do it. Because when you spend time doing this art like this, I mean, it allows you to kind of lose yourself and maybe not feel lonely or, and creativity is just very good for stress levels and all of that. Oh, that's so pretty. What do you think? Okay, I'm going to flip that around. Oh, girly, I know you can't think real well right now. I don't know what I was thinking, even asking you a question. I know how bad you're feeling, sweetie. I wish there was something I could do. I'm trying to think of what I want this to be. The sky, the sky, the sky. Hmm. I think I want a vibrant color. I think I want a vibrant color like if it were on the on the shed out like just like what it does a butterfly represent to me. It represents transformation. It represents like bursts of God's creativeness. I mean, how in the world did he do all of these patterns of colors? So I'm going to do this ripe apricot color. 
going to play around with that and let's just see how that feels to us. And I think I'm going to take it around this. I still don't know what I want to do in here. So let's just kind of see. See how it feels. So this truly is like apricot. I mean, it's that cross between the yellow and the orange. And I say it again, but this is one of my favorite colors. I love this color. So pretty. I don't think we have as many attending tonight because I had to change my class last minute last night. Because last week we had so many people on. It was really fun. I have been given the opportunity of a space anytime I want it during the work week to do um, art parties in the Lake Norman area of Denver. Pretty excited about that. Of course, I'd be curious to know how comfortable you guys are and going out to parties again and things like that. Of course, I asked that. And then whenever Kurt and I went out to um, eat the other day, oh my goodness, the restaurant was packed. By the way, Linda, we went to go to Sweet Taters and use my birthday card <laughs> that you got me. Um, we thought they were going to be open for lunch on Saturday, but they weren't. So we weren't able to go yet. And I can't wait, can't wait to go, because you've mentioned it. I tell you what, when you feel better, maybe we need to go together. Because we still need to celebrate your birthday. I still need to take you out for your birthday. So... I know what favorite animals I love to see in my garden. I love, I know squirrels can be annoying, but I totally love squirrels. Uh, just because they're fun. They're entertaining to watch, right? Hi, Carol. I didn't see you on there. Your grandma used to quilt. I had a little thingy uh, pop up in front of me, so I didn't see your, your post. Um, I love little bunny rabbits. I know people, you know, like, focus on bunny rabbits during Easter, but I love rabbits throughout the year. We keep, um, there must be, um, I don't know what they call them, burrows or whatever, or a rabbit home, <laughs> I would say, but um, underneath our barn because Kurt keeps seeing uh, a rabbit when he's working around the barn and I'm like, I haven't seen it yet. So, but I love rabbits. I love butterflies. I love the hummingbirds. I love my cardinals. And this year we have a blue bird um, that's active, which is exciting. And last year we had a yellow finch. Hey, Susie, it's good to see you. Um, so I love hummingbirds. I love rabbits. Let's see. What else? I'm not the snake fan. Kurt was like, be careful when you're picking up wood to, to do your fire, the fire pit. 
He's like, I saw a little black snake over near the firewood the other day. I'm like, oh, okay. So, I mean, I know that they're a part of the necessity, but. Oh, guess what? Guess what um, I'm working on right now? Even though we don't have any in North Carolina near me. I am working on a flamingo barn quilt. What do you think about that? Pretty excited about the flamingo. And I'm also working on a crab. And uh, for those on the East Coast who like crabbing. And then I have another one that I was drawing out. I'm drawing a blank right now of what it was. Let's see. Oh, a dolphin. How could I forget the dolphin? Because I'm a dolphin. I am literally a dolphin fanatic. Like if I could live somewhere where I could look over and see dolphin every day off my, in my backyard and then have horses in my front yard. Oh my goodness sakes. I don't know what I would do with myself. I just don't know. When I mentioned horses a long time ago, Kurt was like, we are not getting a horse to take care of. But my friend, Deb Bailey, I need to reach out to her because she's like, when are you going to come over and see, see the horse and visit? And she'll let me ride her too. So I'm like, oh, I need to go. I need to go. And then my friend, Kate, she lives in Michigan and they have horses. And this week, um, just yesterday, she sent me a, a text message and the baby chickens were hatching. And I'm like, oh, they're so cute. Um, so they live on this on this farm. And I, you know, I just love, I don't know. I just love animals. I think. And then who could forget my Gabby girl, my golden. Just love her to pieces. Kurt recently just started telling, saying, Hey, old girl, how are you? He's like, oh, in dog years, you're like 42. I'm like, Kurt, be quiet. Shut up, shut up. Don't be saying that my baby's getting old on me. Because, boy, she is my heart. I can't believe she's six years old already. I'm just like, how did, do you just wonder, like, how time flies like that? It's just, it's just absolutely crazy. Susie, where, you live near me, right? I don't know why I keep thinking that you do. I know, Carol, you do. Um, either that or we just talk online so much that I, the area is just, it doesn't really matter when we're on the internet together, does it? Do you think this is too, well, I was just getting ready to say, do you think this is too bold? But you know what? We're not going to know until comes together. I always say that like whenever um, I'll be doing like a landscape painting, I'll be like, oh, I've totally messed it up. Oh, I've totally messed it up. And then I just keep going. And then all of a sudden it turns into something, you know, magical. So the same thing applies with the barn quilt. Sometimes we go, oh, we don't like it, but We, how do we really know until we give, wow, talk about a life lesson. How do we know until we give something a chance? Why is it that sometimes our brain goes, oh, nope, we're going to stop. There's a statistic out there. I need to research it about like what percentage of people fall short of the goal. I do know that like in sales prospecting, um, when I was doing sales training that most people stopped like 96% of people stopped on the fourth contact with a person, right? And the sale was made after right at the fifth or the sixth connection point. So something is in our brain sometimes to stop right before we've reached the achievement. And it's just that one more little extra push that we just might need to do. 
you might just have to push the door just a little bit more instead of that part of our brain that says you can't do that you're crazy if you think you can do that well actually who said that i mean like really like the snake in the garden just saying oh you can't do that <laughs> Just because someone says it, why do we have to take it as absolute fact? I think that's just like a human thing that sometimes we do. I don't know. But I'm becoming more and more aware of it. Of Whose voice am I really listening to? And whose voice do I really need to listen to? For any of us that have raised teenagers... Thank goodness we've had a resilience where they said, I hate you, you know, or I'm never talking to you again. But you know what? We had such a level of unconditional love from birthing that child that we didn't let that stop us from loving them, did we? I have to turn this into a life coaching session, but boy, I tell you what, if we could do that to ourselves and for ourselves like we do for our own children so we don't beat ourselves up, imagine what we could do. If we just believed in ourselves just a little bit more, We decided just to try one more time. We decided to forgive one more time. We made a decision to say that statement doesn't really represent that person. Makes me think. Oh my goodness. So she's not online, right? Where she does listen to some of my Facebook stuff. So this is like therapy for me. Okay. So my mom the other day, <laughs> love my mom. You know how close I am with my mom. So I was at a coffee shop and I called my mom and I was like, hey, I just wanted to let you know I'm near you and I'm at the coffee shop if you want to come by and have a cup of coffee with me or whatever. And she was like, okay. She was like, well, I'm at Walgreens getting my prescription, so I might be there in 15 or so minutes or whatever. I said, okay. I said, well, take your time. I said, um, you know, I'm going to be here for a while. Oh, Susie, I'm painting on a uh, birch wood that has been laser etched with the uh, designs, the, the barn quilt or the quilt design imprinted in it. Isn't that cool? So, so mom says, okay, well, I'll see you in a little bit. I said, okay, I'll see you in a few minutes. So I was looking forward to seeing my mom, right? And I was, I was working on um, actually a book, a book that I just put up on my timeline about falling in love with your, your life again. I was working on that and she comes in and I'm like, hi, or whatever. So my mom loves Hardy's coffee, McDonald's coffee. In fact, I'm surprised that she does not have stock in McDonald's or Hardy's. Like seriously, I bet you if she had stock, she would be one rich lady because ever since I can remember, my mom has loved Hardy's and McDonald's. I mean, if you only knew how many coffee mugs that she has of Hardee's where unlimited coffee for life kind of thing, she has those mugs. Okay. So, so she comes in. So I knew though, because this was a, like, you know, a gourmet type coffee shop that she might not know what type of coffee to pick. So I saw this organic Carolina. So I knew probably that would be a good fit for. Her. Now, I know my mom, I would think pretty well. Um, she's like, I want coffee, hot, 
is it is it fresh is it hot and i want three creams so like i've been ingrained in this i mean i am 50 years old <laughs> But something was, I don't know what, if my mom was aggravated after seeing the dermatologist maybe and having some things froze off of her or if she was aggravated at Walgreens over a prescription. I, I, I really, I, I sincerely don't know, right? Um, but anyways, she was, I said to have a little taste of this and I said, does this work? And she's like, oh yeah, that'll work or whatever. So, you know, I want to take care of my mom. So I, you know, put the coffee in the thing, in, in the cup. And then I went over and I saw the half and half. And so I poured the half and half in. And I'm thinking, knowing that my mom likes three creams in her coffee, it wasn't little creamers. It was like, you know, a craft of half and half. So I added the half and half and I was like, okay, I think that looks good or whatever. So I give it to her in front of the lady, Susie, who owns the coffee shop or whatever. And she goes, oh, this is terrible. You put way too much cream in this. And she like just barked at me, right? And I was just like, I was deflated. Like my heart, I was just like, oh my, I, I literally, I felt like a kid again. Like, oh my gosh, I didn't do good enough for my mom, you know? And so I said, okay, well, here, let me, um, let me see if I can fix it. So I went back to the big craft of coffee and I got a bigger cup and I added more coffee instead of pouring it out. I didn't want the, um, the lady who owns the coffee shop seeing me just like pour out her coffee because I mean, you know, that cost her money. Right. So I was like, okay, let me try to salvage the coffee. And so I got a bigger cup and I added just more coffee to, you know, what I had made. So I doubled the size and I was like, okay, how, how about this now? This tastes terrible. This just will not do. <laughs> and I was like, wow. Oh, okay. I said, I'll, so anyways, Susie who owns it just kind of looked at me like, Ooh, okay. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I said, here you go. Here's the cup. I mean, I'll just let you kind of work on it. And so I went kind of sheepishly back to my seat in the coffee shop. And um, my mom started just kind of, my mom has been in preaching for years or, or whatever. So um, anyway, she starts kind of just riled up and starts saying all these Bible scriptures and, and everything and so forth. And um, so I'm sitting there and then mom comes back and she comes back with a muffin and her coffee. Sorry if I'm boring you with this conversation, but anyway, she comes back and she says, yeah, she goes, um, I also have to, my tooth broke yesterday and I have to get my tooth fixed. And, so I called the dentist and they can't get me in until Tuesday. And I'm going to tell them that I do not want my tooth pulled. I am going to ask for a root canal. And I'll tell you what, if they don't agree and they're not going to do that, then I'm just going to go to a whole other dentist or whatever. So she was like really fiery. Like, so I was like, wow, does she even know that she's like, I, so anyways, I, I, I didn't want to say anything to, try, you know, so I just said, mom, I said, um, is everything OK? I said, you just kind of seem fired up. And she was like, I am. I'm fired up. I just want to go preach. I just want to fire. I'm just fired up. And I said, oh, OK. It seemed like you might be just kind of like stressed or upset about something. Well, then you must not know me too well then. And I was like, OK. I thought, Wow. So as I share that story, I had a choice right there to like let it really upset me or just let it roll off my back because my mom is 84, you know, she's going to have moments like that. Oh, shoot. We're all going to have moments like that where we are. But, you know, I told my sister, I said, I, you know, I'm not sure maybe something else was going on or she was aggravated about something else that I just didn't know. And I just happened to be the one that, where did you get it? 
I make them at gofindyourhappy.com, Susie. And tonight we're doing a 24-hour special pricing on it. That's only for your eyes only, those of y'all in the thing, because I'm because I can't keep that price up forever. But I would love for you to get one if you want to try it. I think you'd like it. Let's change this over this way. And let's just put it up and let's just see how it's looking. Here we go. Whoops. Sorry, I can't see behind my own head. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, there we go. All right, so I am not sure if I totally love, let's just put it on the chair. If I'm in love with the ripe apricot, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep going and let's just see how it starts coming to life. Because I do actually like it, like from a distance, how it's going to show up. I mean, I think that's really pretty. Wow. And you see how the X is already starting to fall form there. So if we wanted to, we could actually look at that really quick. Well, that's kind of cool. I could actually do one, even though these have the squares in them and we could paint it different colors, we could actually do all three of those here and three colors here and three colors here and three colors here and make that like a us, which maybe we'll do or maybe we won't. Let's see. Let's play around with it and see. I'm going to do hmm, what does Trishy want to do? I'm going to use, I'm going to have us go and use a royal blue around this. I think that'll bring the the pop out of this light blue around it. So let's just go ahead and do that and play with this. Play with this royal blue. See if we like it. You never know until we try. Okay. Rinse my little brush. This size, um, Susie is a 24 by 24, but when you go to gofindyourhappy.com, I have them in um, like a 12 by 12. I even have a two-sided garden flag that you can hang from your garden flag pole, so, which is just awesome. I'm going to make me a garden flag. I'm doing the cardinal for my mom for Mother's Day, so because that she's asked for that, so... But, okay, so I'm going to do, I may end up doing these and matching, but I think right now I'm just going to do, bear with me. I'm going to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, my goodness. Okay, guess what? We have got an eight-pointed star around this butterfly. Huh. So we could do, um... Oh, how fun is that? You want to do the eight-pointed star? Let's do it. Let's do it. I just realized that we have an eight-pointed star. Okay, so this is royal blue. Oh, I'm excited. We're going to have a star in the middle of the butterfly. I mean, the middle. Around the butterfly. Yay! Who would have realized... See, I mean, I. this is why I teach the barn quilt stuff, because sometimes if you haven't been doing them for a while, you can miss them. But then with, with me, I can give you my pattern and help you. So, Susie, I've got free shipping and stuff, so that won't cost you anything on that. So if you want to, like, try just one and see if you like it. You might become a little addict, but try it. It's kind of fun. I love sitting out on the patio and doing it. Just makes me appreciate nature and all those wonderful things. Oh, this is going to be, oh, I'm so excited, y'all. 
I am so, see, by standing out from a distance, we were able to see, wow, there's a crisscross. But then me looking at it again, I was like, wait a minute, we've got an eight-pointed star right here that we might have missed. My sweet hubby tonight knew I was going to be painting with y'all, and he was like, I'll have dinner ready for you when you finish up. I was like, aw. So for those of y'all who knew about my shoulder, it is feeling better. It's still got a little bit of a twinge trying to, but I did get a cortisone shot and a lidocaine shot. So that's awesome. Oh, this is going to be pretty, y'all. Really, really pretty. And this royal blue, that's going to be the star. I'm going to be able to take the royal blue and put it into the butterfly. So that way there just is that art element of pulling it all together. Somewhere in here, I am going to incorporate a white. I just don't know where yet. So I have a, I just, because I just put it out. I have a book out there called um, Life as a Mother. It's on Amazon if you want to check it out. Yes, go to your website and you always like free shipping. I'm so glad. I don't think you were on when I was saying that. I was like, you know what? I'm At some point, I'm going to have to turn off the free shipping and I might have to turn it off this weekend and not have it back because... I'm a small business and it, it's hard. But sincerely, you telling me that encourages me to maybe keep it going for a little bit longer. Because I want, I mean, I know when I buy something, I love free shipping. I really do. It, it allows me to kind of know like what my set cost is whenever I don't, I mean, the worst thing, the worst feeling is, I don't know if you've ever had this, but like the worst feeling is when you go to buy something and you're like all excited and you get your hopes up of, yes, I totally want to buy that, right? And then you go to the checkout and then it says, and this is the shipping. And you just go, wah, 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 you know, because you're like, wow, I didn't have that budgeted. And then you X out, you know? So that's why I've really worked hard at trying to keep the shipping going. But honestly, the reason why I was going to turn it off is because when I don't hear from people and they don't tell me, like, this is what's important to me or not important, then I'm just, ha I'm like, well, they just, they don't, I know this sounds like, I mean, I'm just being blunt, but. Sometimes I'm like, well, maybe they just don't even care. So, you know, it's hard. It's it. I don't care what level any of us are. It is, it's hard running a business and, you know, knowing, you know, it, it's just hard, especially us small guys against these big monopolies now. And you know what I'm saying? I mean, my girlfriend was just telling me, she was like, I said, you know, Facebook advertising used to be pretty good for me, but it's like just died off. I said, I don't know why. I said, unless there's just competition or, or what it is. And 
Oh, she said, oh, girl, she goes, you won't believe what happened to me. She said, my credit card got stolen and um, somebody ran up a $9,000 bill advertising on Facebook for a product. She said, so we got a new card and everything. She goes, but now Facebook shut me down from being able to advertise my business. And I'm like, are you serious? And she's like, yeah. And I said, you know, I was coaching a business owner the other day and I said, okay, if, you know, like Facebook wasn't around or whatever, are you prepared to be able to do marketing in other ways? You know, and I said, or do we put all of our eggs in that basket thinking that it's always going to be there? I said, and I think we have to be, make sure that we are diversified in the way that we get our message out, you know? Um, She's like, absolutely. Do I prime the wood? Actually, I don't prime the wood. Um, I do have a ceiling class where um, I use tight bond exterior wood glue around the edges. And I coat the back with um, exterior wood glue, which is glue that's used to glue furniture and stuff like that. That's in all weather conditions. Um, but I don't prime the front of the wood here. Um, Sometimes I'll have to do a second coat of the paint, but um, it soaks in great and the color has stayed wonderful. I use a water-based um, sealer over the top and it's worked great. So... When I first started, I did prime, um, but I didn't notice any noticeable dis difference uh, for me. Um, and I really didn't like the feel of how the paint went on over the primer of, of that particular type primer. So, but this birch wood is specifically made for, you know, weather conditions, so. Oh, I'm so excited. Once, okay, I'm going to do this other one and then we'll pop it up and we'll just see, we'll see what happens. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. Look at that. There's another eight pointed star behind this. Oh, we're totally going to have to do that in the same color. All these little points. Oh, I'm getting, okay, now I'm getting excited. Starting to come together, y'all. I love it when that. Oh, look at my little, my little thing. Let me get my little. Let me get my little wet nappy. It's a big deal. I can paint over it, so. Okay, so here we go. See, I would have possibly missed that there was an eight-pointed star here. So I love that I'm going to be putting this pattern out for you guys. On my playlist, I need to put my music out there for you because then we can play it online. I do have a music CD, actually, that I did. That's another story for another time. Oh, yeah, this is pretty. There's no way I can finish all of this tonight, as you know. That's why we do, when we do live ones, we'll do like three hour workshops and stuff. 
or when I teach a formal class that starts to finish between the ceiling and embellishments and all of that. But through the week, what I'll do is I'll continue to paint this and we'll see how it starts coming more and more to life. I have to meet someone at nine o'clock tomorrow morning to deliver them the bear barn quilt. If you guys have seen the bear, it looks so pretty. But then when I get back, I'm actually going to do some more painting. So, okay. So let me pull that up and y'all can see. Move this up. I think I'm going to do, let me look at it this way. I am going to do another coat of that blue. I just don't know what I want to put in these four corners yet. But I do like white as the eight-pointed star. So my suggestion is as a, if I were your art coach, this is where I would be saying, sometimes you have to step away from the painting to be able to have it tell its story, okay? Um, because sometimes we don't know when to stop. Isn't that the case? We don't know when to say when. If you have any thoughts or suggestions, I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, hey, Dina, how are you? So good to see you. So when you say white in the four corners, do you mean these four corners? Yeah, why don't we just do that? Why don't we just see? We don't have to do all four corners right now, but let's just see what happens. Just see how that feels. Let's see how that feels. Thank you for the insight, because sometimes I look at it and I'm like, okay. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I actually love how the white pops against the blue and the, the green. And this blue will become more dominant because I'm going to do a second layer of the blue on that. Thank you, Susie. I can't wait till I, I want to say I can't wait till I'm finished, but. I'm also learning how to enjoy myself in the process. My mom was saying, she goes, sometimes I can't quit. I just want to keep going until I get finished. I need to learn how to enjoy the process. Like exactly. In the winter time and stuff, if we were watching movies or whatever, I would could easily I would spend the whole weekend just doing one quilt so it would be ready for, for your eyes. But now I'm starting to do more where I'm just painting live in front of y'all. And it's I'm really enjoying it because it gives me companionship because our son is 20. <laughs> and 
he's in his own world and all of that, you know. However, you know what's happened? He's um, started business school with um, Forbes Business School, and he works for Nabisco as a vendor, and they pay for a portion of his school. So he's studying um, management and finance. His dream job would be to work in the NBA in management or finance. And so anyways, he's in this class, and he had to learn how to do an elevator pitch. And um, in my coaching background, that that's actually what I teach is I, I teach people how to become authors and, and write books and how to become professional speakers and voice inflections and vocal coaching and all of that. Right. So he asked Kurt, he was like, can you help me on this? And he was like, I think your mother is going to be a better choice. So he got me out of bed because, you know, he's on his time frame where I'm already in bed by like 930, you know, and he was like, mom, I need help. This is due tomorrow and I'm stressing out. So anyways, I started helping him with it or whatever. I said, do you need to co go down the cottage and then we can, you can use my camera and, and stuff if that'll help you. And he was like, please. Right. So that was last week. He ended up getting a hundred on it, which is awesome. This Monday night, he had to do a three to five minute um, video like he was talking to a fellow um, work colleague on a problem that needed to be solved that he like uncovered right in his real work. So he did about vendor relations and stocking food on the shelves and how it could increase him better sales and blah, blah, blah. So anyways, so he nailed that. We worked on that and he nailed that. And I said, okay, there you go. And he goes, okay, mom, whatever you do, do not do any teachings or art stuff on Monday nights because for the next four weeks, I'm going to need you every Monday. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, you know what? That was pretty awesome because any of y'all who've known me for a long time know that the story and the challenges there um, and how hard that's been and to watch him take ownership of his learning the way he is and also hold on to his dream and say, okay, you know, I may not be able to play professional basketball and what are some other, um, career opportunities that I could have within that passion and to watch him take it seriously and really work hard. I tell you that has just been really a light in my life to watch. And one thing is I've always wanted him to know that he could achieve his dreams if he went for it. I mean, Zig Ziglar is a motivational um, man, if you've ever heard of him. And he was like, you know, you can't be five foot two maybe and say, oh, I'm going to be a professional basketball player. Maybe one chance out of, you know, many. He was like, but that doesn't mean that you can't achieve, you know, another level of something in that, in that family of, of your dream. And um, it just takes hard work and it takes perseverance. And I remember back in 2014, when I started Go Find Your Happy, you now I was working as a CEO of, of my company and I was doing art and just for my, for my own personal healing. But I did have dreams of being able to teach art and life coaching and business coaching and unlocking creativity using art techniques and strategies. And um, to be able to be doing that today, I'm really excited about it. 
today courageously for myself, I decided to take a step and I'm, I really, and actually y'all are a perfect person or group to ask. So I want to actually do like this club, like this group, right? Where we, um, we use art and some crafting ideas and things, but we can, I can help pour into you improving certain areas of your life. Um, not that you can't do it on your own, but you know, being around like-minded people, how good that feels, right? And I have over 7,000 hours in coaching and stuff. So one lady who's known me for a long time, she knew me from the real estate industry. She was like, you know what? I really need a coaching call, Tricia. And so I wrote her back. She actually has a piece of art that still is by her nightstand from years ago. And she's like, I really need, I really need a coaching session. So um, I said, you know, what's on your mind and heart? And she's like, you know, she goes, I don't know if you saw, but I got really sick and I lost 40 pounds and from being sick, not like a goal of losing 40 pounds. And she said, you know, and I was working in administrative duties and things like that. And she's like, and at this stage of my life, I really want to come from a place of service, not a place of just doing administrative tasks. So that way I choose a role in a, in a position that I feel like I'm making a positive impact and it means something more than just getting a paycheck and just, oh, I'm just doing that database entry. And I said, okay, I said, well, I'm going to be, I'm still today and I'm in prayer. I said, let me pray on it. And then it was just so weird because look how good that is. Dina, that looks so good. Thank you so much for that suggestion. I love it. I'm going to go back over that blue. Um, and then it was just totally weird because then I, out of the, out of the clear blue, I had a lady message me. She found me on my website. My personal website is unstoppablewarrior.com. And she's like, I see that you own a publishing company and that you help people with their books. And she's like, I launched my book. So I don't know if you just help beginning people, but I'd really like to figure out how to get my message out there and improve it and so forth. Can you help me? So two women today reached out to me about like mindset and how to, you know, expand on this season of their life. And so I'm just wondering if, you know, is that the universe or I'll say the Lord really saying, Trish, you know, you can show the barn quilts and so forth, but you can have a community too of maybe you guys sharing with one another and growing and how to create the, these small goals that make you feel really good about what you're, uh, and it, maybe doing some things that you never thought was possible before. I know at 50 years old, like I'm like, wow, you know, I'm taking stock of my life. Like I'm taking stock of inventory of things that I took for granted that I had the ability to do. Like God put inside of me, you know, not everybody has the ability to write songs. I write songs, you know, and I need to do that more. Not everybody has the ability to sing. And so I'm preaching to myself when I say I need to sing more to you guys and share that part of my heart. Um, because that's a way that I can give love and I can maybe serve. Wow. I just had like an aha breakthrough moment. I remember when Jordan was little and Boy Scouts and we went to a um, assisted living. Well, it was really like a nursing home. It was a nursing home, not assisted living. It was a nursing home rehab home. And we were going to be de delivering little gifts to each room. But, you know, just kind of walking in, you just have like that energy, right? And I just knew in my heart that music can change the entire 
level energy in a room. And so I was like, well, why don't we sing some Christmas carols? And um, nobody knew the words to the Christmas carols, but I've been singing since I was very young and I was in an acapella group in high school. So we had to learn all the songs. So I like know song lyrics like crazily. Um, actually, I was on American Idol in Disney on stage. Um, no, some of y'all don't. I mean, I've not even talked about that. But anyways, I said, you know what? Let's sing. So I began to sing and let the kids and, and parents kind of fall under the umbrella so they didn't feel like they had to belt it out, but they were bringing that joy. And the energy in the whole place just started igniting it was like little fireworks pop 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 and i will and i give i get chills sharing this because i remember one room i went into it was a this um elderly lady she's probably i would say in her 90s and she, I went there and I, I not only gave her the, the gift, but I wanted to be present with her. And I held her hand and I said, you know, um, I don't know what I said. If I said your love today or um, God loves you or whatever. And she was trying to talk to me and she didn't have, didn't have um, a way to speak. Right. And. One of the other ladies in that was giving the gifts, she was probably like in charge or whatever of the Boy Scouts or whatever. She's like, come on, come on. We've got to go to the next room. And right there in that moment, I knew the Holy Spirit on me that I was to be present with this woman. And I said, I hear you. And I care about you. And God wants you to know how much he loves you. And I held her hand and I hugged her. And you should have seen her eyes just light up, just light up. She just wanted to be seen. She wanted to be heard. And so sharing that with you at like at, at my age, I think we all have different seasons of our life. But what happens is I think sometimes when we're in career mode, we go, oh, let me do self-improvement for my career right now because I'm in career mode. But once I'm retired, I don't have to do that anymore. And that is such a lie from any enemy or chatter because it's at these levels that learning different forms of leadership ability or communication techniques can make such an impact in the work that we're called for in this season of our life. And um, Linda, you might have already laid down or whatever since you're not feeling good. But, you know, I think about the work that you're wanting to do in hospice. You know, you've learned so much. And then is there another level of um, conflict management or conflict resolution uh, resolution between children, you know, during that hospice. I mean, of course there's care and there's comfort, but you know, my father-in-law was on hospice for a very short period of time, but there was conversations about, you know, care and things like that. And, and that's just normal part of life. Right. And so I just want to encourage you that, you know, your life of learning and the seasons of you learning is not ever over. It's an, it's an endless opportunity of just improving. Even sitting here in the barn quilt painting with me. Talking about it when I was 15 and did not pass geometry. And that held me back from applying for Virginia Tech because I did not have the credit to transfer to apply for Virginia Tech geometry. And look, I'm doing geometry today. That's just amazing. I love this white. 
you know what? I believe what's going to happen is I may end up doing the white point and star, but then again, I might not want it to compete. Oh, wait. I know we've been on for a while, but this is what just hit me. So let me just pull this up so you can see. Okay. Because one cool thing about barn quilts is how it can have this like visual that it's like layer upon layer, right? So when we look at this and we see the square here, right? We could actually have it where this is white. So it gives the visual that there is this huge white layer behind it. And then a box of green behind that. And then the star on top of that. Bam! That's, I'm sorry, <laughs> I got excited because now I know the swatch color. I know exactly. The only thing I don't know now is what we're going to color, what we're going to paint the eight pointed star. And Susie, if you end up ordering, what I'll do is I'll give you a couple of different colors for that. So that way you're not left in the, the dark on that for all of that. But I am so excited. That's what needs to happen here is we're going to have white on all the corners. And we haven't done the butterfly yet. Message me. Just put it in the chat session. Would you like me to do another evening of like recording this so you can kind of see how my brain goes? Um, tonight's what, Thursday? So what we can do is, um, I don't know, maybe over the next couple of days, I could do another session. Since we've been on a while, I'm going to go ahead and sign off for tonight. I am going to only have that pricing up till 7 30 tomorrow night and then i'm going to change it because it's just not it's i just can't keep it up forever but i want to reward y'all for spending time with me and giving me insight and i feel like man like y'all were my therapist and you didn't even know it look at that <laughs> so anyways if i start painting tomorrow just kind of like losing myself i promise i will record it okay and Anyways, all right. Anyways, I love you guys. I appreciate you. And let me know if you think I'm on to something where we could, I could pour into you on building the next season of your life and using art as affirmations and unlocking around it. Because I think that would be something really special. So anyways, thank you for being with me tonight. Love y'all bunches. And I'll talk to you, I guess, very soon. You can message me. I'm going to go eat dinner with my sweetie pie. All right. Big heart. Love y'all. Bye.